How does convolution behave under the three most popular transforms in engineering? What happens to convolution after applying Fourier, Laplace or a Z transform to it? Hi everyone, this is Jan Wilczek from thewolfsound.com and in this video we'll discuss the convolution property of Fourier, Laplace and Z transform. The key point to remember is that convolution in the time domain is equivalent to multiplication in the transform domain. Let me repeat that. Convolution in the time domain is equivalent to multiplication in the transform domain. In other words, transform of a convolution equals multiplication of transforms. This is known as the convolution property of the transform. The convolution property is similar in each Fourier, Laplace and Z transform. We'll go over each of them, reminding their definitions, giving the convolution property explicitly and mentioning possible applications of the convolution property. All the mathematical proofs of these properties are given in the associated article, which I'll link to in the description below. Let's begin. Let's start with the Fourier transform, which is one of the most important transforms in engineering. It is defined as a definite integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of a time domain signal over time, multiplied by e to the minus j omega t, where t denotes time and omega is the angular frequency. Now, having two time domain signals and their respective Fourier transforms, the transform of the convolution of these two signals is the multiplication of the Fourier transforms of these signals. The convolution property of the Fourier transform has a number of practical applications. For example, it enables fast convolution algorithms efficient implementation of various signal processing algorithms via frequency domain filtering, frequency domain filter design, cascaded systems analysis, the convolution in the frequency domain, and finally, inspection and derivation of various properties of both the Fourier transform and the convolution. For example, we can observe the commutativity property of convolution from the previous video because the multiplication operands can be easily exchanged. Now let's examine the convolution property of the Laplace transform. Laplace transform is defined as a definite integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of our time domain signal over time, this time multiplied by e to the power of minus st, where t again denotes time and s is a complex frequency variable. And here it is important to note that this transform does not exist for all possible values of s. The set of values of s for which this transform does exist is called the region of convergence, ROC for short. Now, having two signals and their respective Laplace transforms with their regions of convergence, the transform of the convolution of these two signals is the multiplication of their Laplace transforms. But we need to pay special attention to the region of convergence of the resulting Laplace transform. It is guaranteed to include the intersection of ROCs of the two initial Laplace transforms, but it may be larger than that. And we need to determine it for each specific case separately. Finally, let's look at the Z transform, which is defined for discrete signals, X of N, as an infinite sum X of N times Z to the minus N. And Z, again, here is a complex valued variable. And again, this sum converges only for specific values of z. 
and the set of all these values is called the region of convergence. Now, having two time domain discrete signals and their Z transform with their ROCs, the transform of the convolution of these two signals is the multiplication of their Z transforms. And again, as in the case of the Laplace transform, the region of convergence of the resulting transform is guaranteed to include the intersection of the two initial regions of convergence, but it may be larger than that. And again, we need to examine it for our concrete example separately. To summarize, in this video, we examined the convolution property of the Fourier, Laplace, and Z transform. It all boils down to the simple statement that convolution in the time domain is equivalent to multiplication in the transform domain. The mathematical proofs of these properties are shown in the associated article which I link to in the description below. I highly encourage you to check it out because apart from these proofs, it contains even more insight. Other than that, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up and turn on notifications in order not to miss out on the upcoming videos on convolution. Thanks for watching and take care.